Welcome to another exciting edition of Plank of the Week. And I'm delighted this week to introduce you to two people who have been doing Plank of the Week now for quite a long time. Russell Quirk, a veteran, probably the most uh, regularly appearing male guest, I think, actually, over Thank time. Thank you very much. Um, and, of course, Emma Webb, a political commentator, uh, who joins us for the first time in the big studio. So yeah, we can't be believe back. that, because we've been here for a while. So welcome. Uh, and it is pretty amazing, isn't it? It's very snazzy. It's very snazzy. We've got better makeup, better lighting, mm. you know, better quality of guests. It's almost a professional setup. You would think. Yeah. Almost. Glamour. Still got a little way to go. Uh, so, Emma, why don't you kick us off with your first plank nomination of the week? My first plank is the RAF. Um, good. Because they have, uh, and you'll love this, they've gotten rid of the use of the phrase airmen and mm. airwomen yes. and want to replace it with aviator, known to most of us as a pair of sunglasses. Yes. <laughs> That is a pair of sunglasses, isn't it? Ray-Ban aviators. Yeah, I and can't say um, Ray -Ban one, now, one MP, Patrick Mercer, quite rightly said that this was a load of woke BS mm. um, because they're, it, it, it's completely backward. They were saying that now one in five recruits to the RAF are women and right. so they need to use... Therefore, they think they need to use gender-neutral language. So someone complains, which, complained, is, it, is, it, which is, it, is a contradiction, right? Yes. Because they are women. They're yeah. not. They're not non-binary. Well, they're, yeah, they're, they're not, not gender-neutral. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and also, surely that means that the equality has come first. Why would you have the language follow yeah. second? That, but that you know, this all started all. With, with chair, didn't it? Do you remember when they changed chairman to chair, chair person? First, they tried chairperson, which is ridiculous, and then chairwoman sort of didn't sound right. So now it's chair. So you now get called a chair, piece of furniture, mm -hmm. if you happen to be sitting on a committee which you are the head of. It's yeah. mad, isn't it? You're slightly less warm and cuddly than... So maybe they should just call it an air. So actually, after having having recruited loads more women, yeah. they've decided to erase those women by no longer using the phrase so, so, air woman. And are we expected to... I mean, air woman does sound a bit weird. It sounds like something not, not like somebody who's <laughs> in, the, in the RAF. I don't know what it means, really. But are, are, we, are we supposed to believe that the 20% <laughs> of people in the RAF, therefore, that are women are offended by being called women. I mean, is that what I can't imagine they would well, be. Well, I don't suppose Also, that. how many of them are actually going to be air women anyway? Because I presume by being called an air woman, you'd have to actually be flying a plane, wouldn't you? Or... I think many, many of the... They said many of the new recruits are women, so... Yeah, yeah, but they're not all going to be in planes, are they? I mean, I know it sounds weird, but a lot of people work in the army. They will be pilots. Don't they ever go yeah, in a plane. True. Infantry, drivers. Pilots, you know, pilots they... would, of course, be a more sensible term rather than aviators. Pilot would yeah. be fine. Also, <laughs> yeah. what about navigator? Do they have navigators anymore? What do they call them now? But it's just it's just so oversensitive. Yeah. It's again, as always, they assume that someone is going to be offended yes. by something. It's like the um the civil service I was who, say, who wanted say that. to cancel the use of Christmas. Right. They mm. imagine that someone is going mm. to be offended yeah. by something right. when nobody yeah. actually is and offended. They try and get by out it. in front of it. And, and, and then the people they expect will be offended say, No, 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 this and, doesn't offend. And a offend big decision us. Right. probably made by three or four idiots in a room that then affects a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, well let's face it, the idiots yeah. in the room who came up with this probably don't fly planes either. No. You know, or it'll be a consultancy that's been bought in for £18,000 a day to yes. make sure that that organisation is diverse. I mean, maybe they should change the whole name of the Royal Air Force. But on, on a serious note, though, it's, an, yeah. it's, a, it's a contradiction yeah. because they've had an equality drive, yeah. they've got all of these female recruits in, and then they're implementing a policy that erases women and probably makes it less attractive to for women to but, go but, and but, but be also part the, of the, the, world. the serious point if you can make a serious point over something so ridiculous is how do they then gauge gender diversity in the future if they don't know who's That's a man exactly who's a woman point. how do they know well you could look at them and, and make a judgment I mean, well, yeah, but you're not allowed, you're not allowed to do that on site. Oh, so you don't know if the amount of women so in the air force are increasing <laughs> or decreasing. You won't be able to gauge it. So it'll become even less equal and diverse. Well, presumably it also allows them to nominate people who are non-binary and people who do identify themselves as a different gender. I'm oh, sorry, I don't know. But it's like the snake that eats itself, yeah. right? That's eating its own yeah, yeah. tail. It just goes round yeah. and round and round and they just do it. But that's always themselves. what ends up happening. I mean, it's the way everything is now going is that sort of the wokists are now arguing amongst themselves about which bit of the wokists the dream is is real and which bit they can't do. Your, your, comment, your comment about banning the royal bit of the Royal Air Force, yeah. I, I think that could happen. We can't be far away from that, no, can no, we? Well, indeed. soon they'll be banning the force part because it sounds aggressive. Well, Probably, it, it, yeah. If, That's true, actually. Make it service. Yeah, look, if, you're an, service. if you're an anti-monarchist, you'd be offended service. by being part of the Royal Air Force, couldn't you? Because they have changed police force, haven't they? I don't know when this all happened. You know, they've <laughs> changed the language literally around yeah. me as I have lived my life. <laughs> 
you know, yeah. the various decades that I've been through, they've changed everything. Yeah. And the language gets m further and further removed from reality yeah. as well. So now we're getting to a point where things just don't describe the things no. they're relating to. They're becoming so it's abstract. Mad. And the whole royal thing, I mean, anymore. I was thinking of nominating Prince Charles today, but I'm not, he's, he's escaped because there are too many other good ones. But I mean, his speech in Barbados, where he talked about, you know, the, the slavery kind of, you know, the shadow cast across the empire. It's like... You're the, related to the Queen, mm -hmm. right? You're the heir to the throne. Yeah. You know, what do you think that's about? Is that about white... If he's that bothered, why doesn't he well, just give well, up? His great-great-great-grandfather was in charge at that time. Yeah. So it was completely yeah. down to his family that Running we had the world. slavery in the first place. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all his fault. I mean, yeah. I think he should just resign immediately. Yeah. <laughs> It's mad, isn't it? All right, what's your one then? Uh, first one up. My, my first um, festering hypocrite, <laughs> yeah. is, is Ed Davey, leader, leader of the Liberal Democrats. Festering hypocrite of the week. Yeah, so this is the guy that on, on BBC TV, not five Sir, of, please, Sir Ed Davey. Sir Ed Davey, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah, you should say Sir that, because, because most hypocrite. of us have forgotten who he is. <laughs> most of us don't even know who he is. You know, I forget who he is, because he hardly ever gets the chance to speak him. He's got so few MPs yeah. in the House of Commons that he doesn't get to ask a question. He, he has spoken over the last couple of weeks, but yeah. now probably wishes that he hasn't. Hadn't. <laughs> Uh, because he stood up on BBC TV to slate Boris Johnson and the Tory sleaze, as he put yeah. it, over second jobs and so on. Yeah. Um, but seemed to forget that he himself oops, <laughs> has a second job. <laughs> also, it's quite a good one as well. It's not like well, he works you know, for a law does firm. A bit of you know writing on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, of the yeah. Daily no, he works for a law firm that. Uh, let me remind myself, Herbert Smith Freehills, who of course okay. he's now just resigned from. Right. Um, he forgot, I think, that Did he was he? earning seventy-eight thousand pounds a year. It's easily done. <laughs> yeah. To be honest. I mean, I mean where yeah. the money came from when he looked at his bank uh, statement yeah. every year, every week, uh, who knows? But so he has now um, <laughs> referred himself to the <laughs> parliamentary <laughs> standards. I love it when they do that because <laughs> they have no, they don't know, they're not sure whether they might breach. But I think he still looks at himself in the mirror and thinks, no, it's OK. Yeah. You know, I stood up not a few days they ago and slagged off the Tories. I remember, I remember talking to one of these MPs and they actually believe that if they've referred themselves to this body yeah. uh, to find out whether or not okay. they've done anything wrong, that's, that that was, that's enough. That yeah. was the whole point around yeah. Owen Patterson. They thought that he wasn't contrite enough. Yeah. It's like this sort of kangaroo court where you have to go sort of doffing your yeah. cap. Yeah. and. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Bearing in mind that this is, you know, not just an MP that should know better. He is the leader of a party. <laughs> he took it upon himself to stand up on camera to slag off the fact that Tories have all these jobs. I mean, how can jobs. you forget that you've but got But he must have had it in his head that... It's got oh, the same problem with Meghan Markle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, I've also got one of those. So, um, yeah, so massive hypocrite, massive plank. Has he given me any of the money back by any chance? Well, no, that think? hasn't... Uh, that, does, it that say hasn't what, sir, does it say what uh, he was getting that money for? Just as a consultant, consultant. Or something or other. Right. Um, but let, let's be honest, do do firms pay lobbyists consultants? I mean, there's a very fine line between those two things for no benefit whatsoever. I mean, why would you hire an MP and one of such seniority if it wasn't going to benefit you? And therefore, by definition, the benefit must be that that MP is going to do things, say yeah. things, give you access or whatever, um, that somebody else wouldn't be yeah, able to. Yeah, because why else would you have an MP so, on your books? Yeah, so by definition, to... he's, he's as corrupt as the Tory sleaze merchants that he's stood there slating himself. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, it is hilarious, <laughs> because presumably, even if it's only asking him if he can entertain one of their clients in the House of Commons tea room, Mm. You know, that's something which is undue influence, which yeah. shouldn't be allowed to be done. Yeah. Because that's supposed to be your constituents you, you take. Well, so maybe someone should FOI all the emails between Ed Davey and this particular legal firm just to see exactly what yeah. conversations Yeah, But if I was in the on. old days as a journalist, you know, which I'm not anymore, obviously. Um, apparently I'm a shock jock now, so, uh, you know, it's all changed. <laughs> but, I mean, I would just get onto the law firm and say, could you please just tell us exactly what Ed Davey did for you? Yeah, what's the job Over the course of the last two years, yeah. you know, yeah. because I know how they... Fastidious they are about keeping timesheets. You know, People in every glass lawyer, houses, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, every lawyer I've ever, I've ever employed mm. charges by the quarter hour. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's 15 minutes for writing a letter. And I think it's clear, it's important to say that this is not just a Tory thing, it's clearly a Lib Dem thing, as per the point of the It's this a parliamentary thing. But, but Keir Starmer also earned £20,000, yeah. I think, didn't he? Mishkonda a, well, he turned down Mishkonda Ray, didn't he? Yeah, but he, so did, he also has earned yeah. money as, as a second right. job, as a second role. They're, you know, so they're all as bad as each other. Mm. No wonder that we as the public look and just kind of roll our eyes and just yeah. say, OK, well, look, I'm, I'm now even more politically homeless. Right. You're all as bad as each but other. But the thing yeah. is, these things are not, not against... The rules. It's like Jeffrey no. Cox. You know, I I actually think there's a good argument for MPs mm. being allowed to have second jobs. I don't think it should be defined as right. Tory sleaze. What is sleazy is being a hypocrite and being a per, you know throwing right. throwing stones in a glass yeah. house. And also, um, spend, I mean, for me, it's all about the time you spend doing it. You know, if Jeffrey yes. Cox can do five hours work and, uh, and earn a million quid, good luck yeah. to him. The, you the know, but if he's balance. doing but if he's doing sort of fifty hours a week. 
he's clearly not able yeah. to do the, his the job. The check and balance, though, in terms of the filter is surely the electorate. That's what the electorate's there for. That's why they elect or don't yes. elect these people. Yeah. So that when he's up for a re-election in 2024, he's constituents can decide yeah. and not to elect him. And his constituents love him. They think he's a good well, constituency MP. Well, so he's doing right by there's them. There's no issue there. Uh, Jeffrey but I Cox, think, you mean? Or this yeah, guy. Jeffrey Cox. Yeah. But I think Ed Davey, I mean, that's that's what makes it really sleazy, is being so much of a hypocrite mm. that you would, you know, polish your own halo in public and then go cap in hand to the standards committee. Oops. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and presumably when they rule that uh, he hasn't been in breach of anything at all, he maybe take the job back up. Yeah, well, that's why he's done it, I suspect, because mm. he hasn't actually broken the rules. Mm. So, of course, he knows that if the... Uh, if the assessment comes back that he hasn't broken the rules, he, that's a press release to say that he'd done nothing wrong and yeah. he gets, gets off the hook. It's it? like the yeah. way they always say that uh, they don't award themselves their own pay rise. It gets awarded by this body that they've set up to mm. set the pay rise every year. So yeah. it just keeps going. Which they've never We'll just refused. give them another pay rise. Yeah. OK, then, but it's not our fault you're yeah. giving us a pay rise. But they never vote <laughs> against it. No one no. ever moves emotion. No, 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 of course not. <laughs> No, because, you know, it's expensive being down there. Now, I'm going to go with Freddie Flintoff for my first nominee because uh, the cricket uh, star, who's a man who you might say has had a bit of a colourful life in the public eye, who can forget uh, his appearance at Downing Street after England won the Ashes mm. when they seemed to have been up all night drinking. We said he'd been out for three days or something. Something like yeah. that, yeah, and he, was barely, he could barely walk. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that's a terrible thing, yeah. but, you know, again, it's a bit like the glass houses argument, right? He's apparently come out and given an interview. Um, he's been working on Top Gear as well lately. I don't mean that as... A, I mean, that's the name of the show. Yes. I'm not talking about... <laughs> Working um, in Top Gear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one, the one that uh, Jeremy Clarkson used to do. Yeah. Um, but he's been banging on about Roger Moore. For some bizarre reason, he's decided to attack James Bond, which is not very British of him, I would have said. Mm. Um, but he said that uh, James Bond's... Roger Moore as James Bond is a creepy old bloke saying um, the kind you'd warn your daughter about. Now, some people might say Freddie Flintoff's the kind of guy you might say, suggest <laughs> yes. you wouldn't want your daughter to bring Watch home. kettles. I yeah. mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. professional, professional sportsmen, yeah. particularly in sort of cricket and football, you know, they're not known for being shy and retiring. Either. They're not yeah. known for not having a sort of party reputation, which, again, is fine. Um, but he says, he was watching Octopussy, apparently. He says, people I thought were heroes of the silver screen when I was growing up, now I'm not so sure. And then he goes, it hit me when I was watching the movies from the 1970s that this was a creepy old bloke who you'd warn your daughter about. I watched Roger Moore in Octopussy. He's on this bed with an aquarium in the background. I don't know what the Crying aquarium itself. has got well, to do with it. It's it? just <laughs> <It's laughs> outrageous. With a girl in her mid-twenties, he must be 50-odd, with his hairy back, and he's getting on to mount her, which is a very odd choice of phrase. Uh, giving a little wink to the camera like everyone's in on it, and it's all right. Well, that's the whole point of Roger Moore's James Bond, isn't it? I mean, yeah, but, but it was also of its time. It was of its time. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Roger Moore's James Bond. Actually, I don't think he was one. It of the, was. I think it was of its. Ones. It's of its time in as much as this statement is of its time. Mm. That is pure virtue signalling. It really he's is. He's watched something. So there's with a the forty attention. year gap between the, the the comment and the reality. Well, I, I think he's he's sat down to watch that and he's thought, I'm I'm going to find something problematic so I can make myself yes. look good in public. Because and I'm going to bash Roger Moore in the process. Yeah. Well, here's another uh, little factlet about young Mr Flintoff. It comes uh, after earlier this month, Freddie revealed how his cricket career ended. Uh, his cricket career ending coincided with an all-night bender with Kasabian and Oasis. <laughs> now... Call me old-fashioned, but Kasabian and Oasis is also not really known for... They're probably not sitting there reading prayer books. I don't think they are. Are they? They, they, they weren't doing a sort of a tour of northern yeah. Anglican that, that, churches. That sounds like a very, very, very messy day or two, don't know, or four, <laughs> or five. Mm. He's yeah, now yeah, so sober. Good. Maybe that's the problem. He's now apparently given up a drink. Yeah. And uh, he went to, uh, to have a medical appointment, popped into the Landmark Hotel for a quiet drink the night before, but he ran into Kasabian Serge Pizzordo um, and Oasis, and it became a rather raucous affair. Yeah. Um, so any fish tanks yeah. involved? Well, I think there might well have been the odd aquarium, um, but certainly, <laughs> uh, certainly drunkers' fish tanks. As, as yeah, I, I suspect, given what's going on with the cricketing world, particularly at the moment, that Freddie Flintoff and Co. Mm -hmm. they want to be very, very careful. There's a bit of backside. They don't say too much, so people start delving into their social yes. media from. Five, and also, if you're well, watching, years years ago, watching yeah. old movies from the seventies, I mean, what are you expecting? You to might see? find something. What yeah. are you expecting to see, <laughs> exactly? So I think Freddie Flintoff, much as um, people say he's a great guy to be around, I think he's made a bit of a woke it's, blunder it screams, here. screams, please well, don't look the, at me. Yeah. Please don't the BBC. investigate me. He's been indoctrinated by the BBC, by the sounds of it. Yeah, it sounds like He's been sucked in and kind of spat out yeah. by the BBC. Exactly right. So, your number two? My number two is the City of London Corporation. Excellent. Uh, they took, I think they've been uh, in it before. They, 
<laughs> they took a, a photograph of themselves standing in front of one of those. Apparently, it's called a tube roundel. Mm. It's the, the round tube sign that normally has the name of the place in it. They were standing in front of one of those signs that just said smile on it, oh, yeah. but they took the photo wearing masks. Oh. <laughs> but can you see they're smiling with their eyes? Smizing. <laughs> oh. Smizing in front of the smile sign. Um, but yeah, again, this was, uh, you know, comes after all of the stuff to do with the mask mandate. And they're outside, that's... presumably, aren't they? Or are they inside? In inside. Oh, it's well, it inside. looks like they're inside, right. in front of the Because quite sign. often what you see with these characters is they put the mask on for the picture, and as soon as the picture's been taken, they take it off. Yeah. You know, we saw Megan and Harry doing that in New York. Yeah, yeah. And Nadine, the uh, education secretary, yeah. doing exactly the same thing, no doubt, at that education conference. Well, I don't think there was any point at which she was wearing a mask in, in that situation. Well, as we all no, masks are only for the help. Um, that's right. That's mm -hmm. only if you're actually uh, t bringing some food or drink to somebody, you have to wear it. But, but Emma, where <laughs> are... I mean, I'm, I'm sure that the City of London Corporation spent a lot of money on consultants and probably PR. Where were their handlers, their advisors that stood there or should have been standing there to say, yeah, that, that's just... You look ridiculous. Yes. Don't do that. But there's a, there's a great shortage of that. We do shortage of the day. I should do shortage of decent advisors because <laughs> none of them seem to have anyone that tells them that's going to look ridiculous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody has or that too scared anymore. Too, maybe, yeah. Right? All the advisors have got so much contempt for the people they're advising, they just think, this would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just let them do if, you, it. if you were looking for some mischief, that would be a yeah, really yeah, good yeah, line yeah. of work yeah. to go just, into. Just stand a bit more over to the left. That's, that's just right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it really is quite extraordinary how the mask thing has kind of taken over, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's now suddenly gone from only a few months ago when they were saying, well, social distancing is definitely the thing. Yeah. That's definitely the thing. Um, and now it's masks. And so uh, even when they were saying before, well, actually, they don't, they don't really protect you. Now it's because just in case, you're safe mm -hmm. than sorry, blah, you know. Or, or the argument that it's to make other people feel more comfortable. Yes, right. Yeah. It's not really about the efficacy as, no. as, as much as it is about other people's mm. feelings and mental health. Right. I know, it really is quite extraordinary. And, and, and when on. it comes to the, apparently, the the protocol around masks is that you're supposed to wear a particular type of mask, right. of course. You can't just get one of these things off Amazon for £2.50. Uh, what, you mean the blue, okay. the blue ones everybody wears? Yeah, yeah. So apparently it has to be a specific grade of mask. Oh, really? So for, for it to have proper mm -hmm. uh, effectiveness. Yes. Um, but also not to wear it every day for six months, which I suspect the vast yeah. majority of people do. So even though there are people out there wearing masks because they're doing the, the right thing, they're doing mm. their duty, the effectiveness of their mask wearing is absolutely pointless yeah. because and you they're would, not working. And you would also have to wear it perfectly consistently yes. in the sense that you, you know, never pull it I'd, down. Yeah, I mean, because so obviously if they did work, then nobody would be getting infected with COVID, would they? Well, especially in the countries where there's been a mask mandate, yeah. like Scotland for the last 12 months. Mm. Well, how come in the mm -hmm. recent weeks and months they've had a huge increase in COVID yeah. cases? And you've got, I mean, you've got the Omicron variant, variant in countries where they've had the most draconian rules ever, never mind masks, yeah. but yeah. locking down the unvaccinated. Yeah. And, and isn't that, so... I mean, that, that was in itself going to be a plank of mine, the mm. Omicron uh, variant, on the basis of the fear that has been... Uh, incepted upon us all uh, over the last three or four days without there being any basis to it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. you know, we've got the South African Medical Association saying, no, actually, every single case that's been presented to us in the last, what, three weeks, so it's mm. not a short amount of time, um, is presented with mild symptoms, has been... You know, no deaths. And they do say that that might change. They do say that that might yeah, change. Yeah, but the evidence but the so far is it's okay, no. yeah. But instead, the whole world now has just basically gone back mm. 18 months mm -hmm. and, you know, we're potentially on the verge of even more egregious restrictions, totally unnecessary. And, oh. and the press conference, when they were when they were discussing this, it almost seemed as if they, it was it was some kind of uh, PR campaign mm. for the booster, yeah. um, booster campaign. Funny right? that. To, to get everybody to, to, to have your jabs before the wave comes, yeah. just in case the wave comes, because because yeah. it wouldn't work if you had them during the wave. That no. wouldn't be effective. No, yeah. of course not. It's almost like a, yeah, a, um, a convenient yeah, publicity uh, publicity exercise, isn't it? And then Jonathan Van Tam, of course, you see him yesterday at the press conference where he was saying all sorts of things that were completely untrue, as mm. far as I can see. Um, you know, One of those things being that with the new variant, if it does spread more rapidly, which it may well do, that in his words, it will inevitably lead to more hospitalizations. Yeah. That's not true. Well, if, it, if it's a mild it's aversion, a prediction, isn't it, it won't do that. But the problem is, is that with a lot of these things that, that you say are not true, it's not so much that it's not true or it's or it is true, it's the fact we that it's a prediction. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if they keep saying we don't really know, but mm. that's fine, mm. but they don't really know. And how many of these scientists' predictions from Downing Street over the last 18 months have come true? Not many. Uh, not very many. In, in terms of the numbers. Well, they haven't... In ter yeah, no, exactly right. But it's, it's it's a whole minefield, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, you start... This is why we didn't want to do it. Because uh, as a, as a, <laughs> you end up just disappearing down the rabbit hole. I'm sick to death of it. So I'm going to ban it, actually. I'm going to ban the variant and any mention of it from the Plank of the Week show. OK. Give us your second Let's nomination. Let's talk about cats instead. Let's talk about cats. <laughs> nah, cats this is good. This, this is very I good. I think this is great. This could um, be the best. This could be the winner. Fremantle Council. 
this is Western Australia. Yeah. I mean, Australia, what a world, what a country that is now compared to what I thought it was. Um, they have, as a council, issued an edict which has been approved <laughs> by a show of hands. So it's a democratic yeah. decision. But were they all in the same room together? Or was it well, I don't know if they call? were on Zoom. I don't know. Maybe that might explain <laughs> it. Um, what they have done, I kid you not, is to ban cats from <laughs> being outside... I mean, Except, have you ever tried to tell a cat to do anything? Well, herding cats. <laughs> yeah. Where do they think that I mean, comes from? I mean, it really... Is, <laughs> Where I mean, do they, they think don't herding care. cats comes from? Cats so, do not care. So, and, and yeah, cats are probably not they getting the message. They do whatever they want, cats. Cats are now banned from being outside, of course, except if they're on a lead. That's all right. On a lead? On a lead, yeah. Ever, I mean, I'm very, I mean, occasionally see a cat on a lead and you think that's weird and you take a picture of it. But I kid you not, this is not the April 1st edition of Plank of the Week. This is true. Fremantle Council, <laughs> Western Australia, cats banned from being outside except when on a lead. When you um, think because the they're feral can't and because get more. Well, it's like a, a cat curfew, then, is it? Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, effectively. But why cats? Because they're wayward and because they do their own thing <laughs> and because wayward. they wee in places and they scratch and they they look untidy and they've got fleas. I don't know, a whole bunch of these are people. It's neurotic. It's completely yeah. neurotic. These are the same people, right, who have ordered that certain... They, people couldn't travel between the states, right? So they would have days when they could drive to the border, right, and sort of look over it to the people that they know who live in the other state. And so they'd all have to drive to the border of the What's state. The state line? But they <laughs> couldn't actually cross the line. No cats are allowed to cross state lines. And obviously lines. cats are not allowed to cross state lines, presumably. <laughs> well, I guess. But I mean... Wayward creatures. But, 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 but again, the serious point here is that these authorities now think they have so much authority, they can now start dictating to wildlife how they move yeah. around the world. I mean, what about birds? Nuts. I mean, maybe they should worry about the birds, which might be carrying think, all sorts well, of things. Next, it will be birds but having it's... to have nappies on because they poo on people. Maybe. Bird but, flu. Yeah, on a, ser on a serious level, it is really Promethean. They think that they can be in control of absolutely yeah. everything. Yes. Nature, birds. everyone's behaviour, yeah. As a consequence the of the last 18 months. Tides. It's sinister. Yeah, it's really it really sinister. Is. <laughs> Tides are not moon. allowed to come yeah. in any further. <laughs> you know, there'll be a Wind, nice weather. On the... <laughs> yeah. But it is bad, isn't it? But also... The the, the effect of all of that is that people now find themselves incapable of making any decisions yeah. without being told that they can do it. You see people all the time. It's, it's a real bugbear of mine. I used to go to my kids, my primary school, kids' primary school for, like, you know, running and athletic days and all sports days, whatever. And they'd all start sort of trying to herd the parents, these teachers, because, you know, they think you're like a child. So they, mm -hmm. they treat children all day like children. And I remember one of them was like, you can't go there to me. I was like, Sorry? You can't walk that way. I said, well, I'm walking this way, if that's all right for you. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not really nine. I don't really need permission. I'm <laughs> not nine. Yeah, exactly. I'm not a child. I'm yeah. not in I your care. That, I know that you've banned mentioning Om Omicron. But just to go back <laughs> to the press conference. not going well. <laughs> He's already brought it up with the cats. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the press conferences, I don't know if you've noticed, have started to look like a dumbed-down version of Blue Peter. The way that they explain <laughs> things to people. Yes. It's so Next slide, please. Yeah. Well, you think really they think the public were, are stupid, were, well, were, surely When, not. when um, he, uh, Van Damme was explaining, mm. um, and he said Van Damme, when Jean-Claude Van Jean -Claude, Damme was explaining to, to us why, why the, um, the, the system of naming the virus is not numerical, why it's mm. based on these Greek letters. Yeah. Um, it was it was like a dumbed down version of Blue Peter. Yeah, unbelievable. Right. Anyway, um, so it's time for my second one. I'm going to go with uh, the BBC mm -hmm. um, on two counts. One, uh, actually, here we are talking about it again. Susan Mickey uh, was the first guest that they chose after the press conference on Saturday. Uh, finished up with Boris Johnson. Finished up the slides. You know, Witty and Valance went off uh, backstage to you know have their backstage Cackle. glass of orange juice, presumably <laughs> take off the mask. Um, and uh, they went instead of going to sort of eat the South Africa, which is what I would have suggested as a story line. You know, let's go to South Africa and find out what they know, mm. or talk to somebody who might have some information that was useful from a hospital or something. They went to Susan Mickey, who is one not a medical person at all, who's a behavioural scientist. Who, of course, said, "Well, the thing is, it's not. They haven't done enough. You know, they should be locking down more. They should be making people stay at home mm. and work from home." And it was just the most ridiculous that, that thing. Was... And now, two actual scientists have said. One of them, Simon Clark, who comes on with us quite a bit, and he's not by any means a sort of rabid, you know, anti-masker or anything like that. He said it's just wrong. They need to start telling people who this woman is, mm -hmm. and they can't just say Susan Mickey from yeah. Sex. She's got no credentials. She's she, a former she's a... communist member of the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. She's a Labour Party donor. Right? Yeah. So she's always been to the left of centre. And they, they're saying, look, we don't mind if you get her on, but you must caption her correctly. Mm -hmm. You must start telling people. Yeah, the context. Exactly what it is. And did she suggest that we should keep some of these measures... Forever. Forever, yes. because of climate change. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, she's very much in favour of all of that. But, and but what that I'd was like also that was the BBC and Sky's line. I mean, he, immediately that Boris Johnson and his kind of you know Tweedledee and Tweedledum kind of stopped talking on Saturday. Um, the Sky and BBC journalistic narrative was very much about can you rule out uh, or can you not rule out lockdowns, for instance. Right. Well, of course, they only asked that question as a plant so that later on, as Judy happened, Sky reporter outside Downing Street, his narrative, his whole headline was, and of course the government's not ruling out lockdowns. No. So he asked a question just so he could say that outside right. and scare the bejesus right. out of everybody. Exactly right. So she's a member of this thing called Spy B, which is relatively new. I mean, I've heard of Sage, I've heard of Nerve Tag, which nobody seems to mention anymore, because I've like Neil Ferguson quit mm. Sage, but then joined Nerve Tag, which it turns out is pretty much the same thing. I don't know where these people are coming from. I don't know where they're getting paid from. I know a lot of them are attached to Imperial College. But, you know, what is Spy B and who's in it and what does it do? Mm. I mean, you don't even know the and answer to it. Is it the same PR consultants that chose to name it Spy B? <laughs> I mean, it's a weird name, isn't it? I mean, where so does it inspire trust, well, Where it? do they get the authority to speak with authority? Yeah. And also, an awful lot of the time when they do speak, they speak in a personal capacity. It's like, well, then in that case, I don't care what you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might as well ask the bloke down the road. Because it's not official. It's yeah. not official. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, she's a long-standing member of the Communist Party, uh, a Labour donor, uh, and she basically was having a go... Um, saying that uh, masks should be mandatory in all public buildings and uh, social distancing should come back as well. And I just don't understand when we started listening to all these people, mm. you know? Mm. But the, the, the implication, of course, I was with some people at the weekend that then converted that hyperbole, that rhetoric that they heard both from the press conference but also the journalistic narrative thereafter, and they kind of converted lockdown, social distancing, uh, travel restrictions, all of this stuff as being absolutely necessary. Mm. So the public, you know, I, I know the likes of us don't get led by, mm. you know, what, what the government kind of um, crazily tell us that we should or shouldn't be doing. But a lot of people do. Yeah. And all this stuff that comes out as a consequence of this, this rubbish then convinces a lot of the public that... Omicron is really, really dangerous. It doesn't appear that mm. it, it definitely is. Yeah. It doesn't appear that it is. It yeah. might be, might not be. We just don't know. Um, and that all of these things that should perhaps happen. I mean, Nicola Sturgeon and um, uh, Drakeford yeah. also immediately called for Boris Johnson yesterday to tighten up restrictions yeah. with no evidence yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. And actually, also, uh, but they just like restrictions. That's the point. In yeah. the um, the. Uh, Sajid Javid's address in um, Parliament yesterday after the press conference, um, and I can't remember which Labour MP it was that stood up and just, uh, again, as the Labour Party always do, they want more, more, more. Yeah, yeah. They don't have any policy imagination right. whatsoever. They just want more masks. Mm. We in the Labour Party think that we should never have gotten rid of masks at all. Yeah. We, would we wouldn't be in this Even situation. Even though they didn't wear any at their own conference. Well, yeah, quite. <laughs> you know. Although they said that was okay because it was a special event that they I all think knew it's, that they were. It's, it's worrying because they that there's this feeling that, and I I I find this disturbing. I think it's very sinister that increasingly you see people in all of these different areas, whether it's Sage, whether it's you know Sturgeon or Labour Party MPs, who have now got it into their heads that the the, the state or the elected officials should, or even unelected officials should have this kind of power over people's lives that, you know, nanny knows best. Yes. Mm. Um, and now it seems to have become so deeply ingrained in all of their thinking well, that I, at, I, I mean, wonder what the effects of that will be on our politics yeah. forever. Well, I do wonder as well, because right up until the end of last week, until this sort of variant was discovered in, in South Africa, it was almost as though we were out of the whole COVID conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, we were starting to listen to people talking about other things. You know, we were talking about migrants. We were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, the policy with the EU on fishing. We were talking about, you know, COP26 and, and the whole green agenda and all of that. But that's another thing where they've all gone kind of over to one side and all agreed that this is this is mm -hmm. the narrative and this is all true. You can't argue with it. Yeah. So and if you do argue with it, you're some kind of maniac. Well, and you know? then you get cancelled. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the truth of it all is is that some of the stuff they talk about is true, mm. but it's what they then do with that mm. which I think is the problem. Well, and not allowing you the know. debate. Not, not allowing, you know, this thing yeah. about following the science. Well, mm. guess what? Sometimes the science is contradictory. It conflicts. Well, it can So be. let's have the debate about both strands mm -hmm. of yeah. science. Let's not just say, well, you can't talk about that bit. Mm. Uh, you can only talk about this science yeah. that suits our narrative. But again, yeah. it's the paternalism. Yeah. Because the paternalism it's precludes the we know there best being thing. any discussion yeah. whatsoever. You can't have proper science without mm. discussion. You can't have a proper free society without debate. Yeah. And because they've got this paternalistic mindset, now they think that no anybody who contradicts them is, is bad and wrong and should shut up. Yeah. YouTube. 
YouTube channel taken down. Yeah. Well, exactly right. right. <laughs> and then, of course, the other reason I'm nominated the BBC is because David Blunkett um, this week wrote in the Daily Mail that he's given up listening to Radio 4 now because it's become so woke that it's just ridiculous and pathetic. But it's so all... bad it took itself off air this week, I think. No. Yeah, apparently so. It's <laughs> missing uh, for quite some time, I think, yeah, no yesterday morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, every, I think, actually, I'm told that everybody else got a bit of a boost and, of course, anybody that came to listen to Talk Radio will be staying with us yes. because it's a lot more interesting. And the point about uh, Radio 4 and the Today programme in particular, I used to watch that, listen to that, like, religiously. It used to be the one show that you always needed to listen to as a journalist anyway because it had everything you needed to know for that day when I was working in the newspapers and all of that. But I don't know what's happened to it. It's now become this kind of bizarre fest of revolving presenters and they've got so many people you can you don't know never know who's on from one day to the next and you know you get nick robinson shouting at the prime minister telling him to shut up you know and you're kind of going sorry <laughs> you've asked the prime minister onto the radio and you've told him to shut up isn't the point that you'd want him to speak yeah which is i think what boris said about it you know mm -hmm. and you're just thinking i don't know where it all went wrong and now they're talking about getting laura kunzberg in as well because she's obviously giving up her job as BBC political editor. Are you not nominating the BBC for a third reason? What was that be? Acquiescing on the whole Mexit thing. Oh, yes. That's a very good point. Third reason. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. So, so yeah. This, is, this is news that has entirely passed me well, by. Well, this, yeah. this is the second instalment of the, the Harry versus William royal family, you know, explosion, yes. if you like. Where apparently they're briefing against each other and so on and so forth. And, of course, lots of people, us included, have referred to the fact that Meghan and Harry have decided to go off to the States as Megxit, right. which makes perfect sense. It rhymes with Brexit. It rhymes with Brexit. It's got the same number of syllables. It's what we call in the in the trade yeah. a decent headline. But Harry mm -hmm. has but apparently said, Harry thinks it's misogynistic. Yeah. And, and so, and therefore, sexist. the BBC put their hands up and said, oh, OK, then. And um, so now they're renaming it the Sussex. Sussexit, which Sussex makes no sense because it's got because one extra... Because they can't do the sexit. That was Sussex. Sexit, so more well, syllables. Yeah, no, and so now it's got three syllables instead of two, which completely ruins the idea. Yeah. Um, and it just doesn't work. And it doesn't make any sense. It's also really hard to say. Yes. Sussex. Sussex. Yes. <laughs> but they've just given in. Also, they're not Why the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Why do we keep calling no, them that? Quiet. You know, I, but, but, but I prefer the fact to call them Mexit the Duke and is, Duchess of Netflix. Mexit is just colloquial. It just is, right? It's just what we say, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, and Try it's and not offensive. Well, it's like Frexit. You know, you talk to the French about, you know, whether France is going to leave the European Union. It's Frexit. Yeah. It's how is it? But it's not offensive in any way, shape, or form. The BBC yet again have acquiesced, given in, and just said, "Okay, we've called it something even more ridiculous now." It's, um, it anyway, really is three reasons. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, he said, uh, he, "People who live outside a narrow class of well-off professionals who rigidly write on opinions, almost all of them in London, no longer feel included by the station." That's what he says, Wonderful. and I think that's right. Mm. So come to Talk Radio; you'll be very welcome. People will like. No, I'm into that. Yeah. Now your third one, please. Disney Plus. Disney Plus. This is my favourite one ah. because it's so wild. So if you remember Disney. Plus um, put out a, a Black Lives Matter advertising commercial campaign um, at the time. Yes. And um, now they have removed... To show how inclusive they are. Well, yes. And it turns out that actually they're not exactly, going back to people in glass houses, mm. ex not exactly consistent in their approach to these sorts of things, particularly when it comes to slavery. Um, so... Episode 12, series 16, 2005, if anyone wants to look it up, um, has been removed from Disney Plus in Hong Kong uh -huh. because it depicts the Simpsons family going on a trip to China. There's a, an adoption that occurs and it features Tiananmen Square. Uh, and so obviously the Chinese authorities don't like this very much. They don't like so to think about that, do Disney they? have acquiesced to Chinese pressure. And actually, it's not the first time they've done that either because back when um, Mulan... So they cancelled that show? They, it, you cannot get that in Hong Kong. You can get the rest of it, but that episode is just missing. Blank space. It goes straight from episode 11 to episode 13. I'm not a massive expert um, on The Simpsons. Does it mean that it's... Um, you don't miss anything, I don't think. Well, I don't know no, whether it, you missed any not. part of the, the plot lines. No, 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 no but no, I think... No. So <laughs> back, no plot. Back when they... <laughs> <laughs> they've lost well, the plot. They're quite a, well, there kind of is a plot. plot. I mean, it's like Family Guy. There's always a story going. Well, there's definitely no continuity. <laughs> I mean, I've watched plot. cartoons. I know how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they um, back back in uh, September, I think it was last year, they released uh, this new Mulan mm. film, and in the credits, they um, they credited the Xinjiang security services, which of course Xinjiang is an area where there are a lot of Uyghur Muslims oh, who right? are being held right. captive, essentially. So what do they have to do with this film? Then? Camps. Um, so they were criticised for it at the time. There hasn't been any consequence for them. But this is just one more reminder mm. that Disney Plus are complete hypocrites. Mm. Um, Do you and think it's just they are absolutely in the pocket of China? Because it's the Chinese market for Disney Plus is absolutely massive. 
that's what it's well, about. Well, that's the, it's that's the thing. It is, but that's the thing. But, I mean, albeit that it's commercialism, you, know, you should still have a little bit of a backbone, shouldn't you? Of some kind of morality. Absolutely. I mean, everybody used to say, famously, if you could sell a box of matches to everybody in China, you'd be a billionaire overnight. But yeah. if, if you're putting out commercials about Black Lives Matter, which mm. obviously is premised to some degree on the idea that you are opposed to historic slavery, yes. why would you then not take some kind of stance as a company, because many companies now are taking moral stances on certain things, right. but not others. Mm. Why would you not take a moral stance on something that is happening right now? Yeah, be consistent. Yes. Exactly. It's, it's, it's just Because you're supposed to want to try and influence the government that is misbehaving, if you want to call it that. This is rather an un understated way of describing what they're doing. Mm. But, you know, um, you're supposed to be able to influence them. So if you say, look, we will not put our stuff into your country unless you stop doing that. Mm. But surely if you're so concerned yeah. about being on the wrong side of history in real terms, mm. then you wouldn't, you would, you would be, you know, you, you would, you would see that as being some kind of uh, reputational mm. risk yeah. in doing something like this. You would think, like but unfortunately everybody's such a hypocrite. But the reality now. is that all they, all they want yeah. to do is they want to virtue signal about Black Lives Matter yeah. because that's easier for them to yes. do that because it's timely mm. and it's convenient. But when it actually comes to this commercial pressure that's being put on them from China, still be, they immediately put their hands still be up a and massively say, sure, we'll do huge, Xi Yeah, they, they'd still be a massively huge and wealthy company if they didn't yeah. go into it, China. It, this is the same channel, of course, that was one of the first ones to put those stupid warning messages on films and uh, TV shows. Yes. You know, so Lady in the Tramp for instance, that of course was made in whenever the 1960s or 70s. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not it's not something that is represented by today's view. What could basically possibly witness. be problematic well, it's about mis Lady misogynistic, the of course. Lady oh no, another cast. I think did they not put one on the Aristocats as well? Yeah, exactly. And they put one on um, Aladdin, I think. You know, yeah. all sorts of. But it's you back know, to the Freddie Flintoff, Roger Moore uh, point. Uh, I was going to say Freddie Flintoff. Freddie Flintoff would have filled though. Yeah, you expect the 1970s to reflect. Guess what? The 1970s. Yeah, yeah. Because you couldn't look forward 40 years as a broadcast and decide what was but, going to be politically correct This is Lewis Hamilton levels of hypocrisy, isn't it? Because remember, he went to... <laughs> I can't even believe we didn't put him in last week. He went to the Qatar, Qatar Grand Prix. Exactly. But he wore a rainbow helmet. Yeah. Right? In a country where homosexuality is actually illegal. Yeah. So he's, but he's, for him, that's his way of showing yeah. some kind of. But he of, still know, took the money for the race. Resistance. But he still raced. Yeah, he still took the money, no doubt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see him donating that to charity. That's the pandemic. That really is absolutely the pandemic. More, Unbelievable. More, more now, we always carry one over, and it's been a struggle to think of who to bring over, but I think. I'm and gonna I've got to... one more to do. Have you? Mm. Okay, well, I can, I, can, I can interrupt at any time. You know, this is my show, so... Okay. But if you want to do yours <laughs> first, go ahead. Um, national Tyres and Auto Care. Excellent. Yes. Uh, a bit of Christmas spirit being injected here mm. as we're uh, only a, a little while away. Um, so this is a press release that came out from the National Tyres and Auto Care Company, which warns us that when we're on our way to Christmas do's or perhaps on our way to work in our kind of Christmas jumpers for Christmas jumpers... I don't think there's going to be any Christmas do's, by the well, way. Well, maybe they might have been off the cancelled. <laughs> um, but they've actually warned that we shouldn't do that. So no Christmas right. Jumpers with flashing lights, no antlers on your head, no tinsel, uh, and the reason is it's dangerous. Is apparently, it? you might crash. Right, but also you probably risk is dangerous to wear antlers in your car. You risk eyes. you risk a five thousand pound fine because technically all these things are a breach of the highway code. So I would just like to say thank you to National Tyres really? and Auto Care um, for being so woke as to basically uh. tell us what we can and can't wear behind the wheel. So of if car. you're wearing a Christmas jumper, that's now an offence, is it? Well, it? I mean, could, I think it should be. To it be could re restrict you, I guess, <laughs> in a three point turn situation. But if there's lights flashing, that might. Yeah, but what if it doesn't have any lights? What if it's just a Christmas jumper with a picture of a Christmas tree on it? How can they do you for that? Maybe that's distracting. I don't I know. Charge Other you with drivers, Is it dependent perhaps? on the height of the reindeer antlers? I don't know. I don't think they've gone into that much detail. Well, in the so press what if you've got a convertible and they stick out the top? <laughs> yeah. How about or a sunroof? Maybe that's. I've got a sunroof, so. Yeah. It could still be distracting that might be to other more drivers. Dangerous. Yeah, I must admit, I hate people that put stuff like that on their cars. If I see them, oh, yeah, I yeah, just yeah. think you complete. Nubbity. Yeah. I yeah, mean, you know, I thought this was reindeer antlers on the car. You know, <laughs> you know those eyelashes on the headlights, that kind of thing. I mean, come on. No, I thought if, if they're if we're not under threat enough from Christmas being cancelled every ten minutes or so by <laughs> someone or other, um, this lot had seemed to be determined just to take the last morsel of joy out of Christmas and to, and to stop us. Hasn't there been out? somebody trying to degender uh, Santa at some point? I mean, this think, is this what? is what a good friend of mine describes as insect authority. Yes, mm. it really is. People who have got their their little bit of power, yeah. and they want to use it like the Grinch to stop yeah. you from having any, any fun. Any fun at, at all. all? Yeah, life, absolutely Life right. has been cancelled. Yes, you can't be having any fun. I think these people. I mean, going back to Susan Mickey and people like her, they don't want people to have any fun. Mm. They literally they live in big houses. They they don't want to meet anyone that they don't really know. They're quite happy not to go anywhere. Quite happy not to go out drinking or carousing. 
you know, I mean, it's a very weird life they live a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, we've become very clinicised, very sanitised, very risk-averse. Yes. Anything with a bit of fun, of course, yeah, might involve some element of risk, so yeah. therefore we mm. should cancel it. Mm. That's exactly where we God are. God forbid anybody should have any feelings, positive or negative, about anything mm. in their lives. Yeah, and if you do, for heaven's sake, don't share them. But it's all rather <laughs> Maoist, isn't it? I right. don't share them, emote as much as possible. So so I'm going to add, I'm going to bring in first the one we're carrying over. It's going to be Keir Starmer, obviously, mm. uh, because in the midst of all of this crazy madness, which we failed miserably to cancel out of the Plank Show, uh, this bleeding variant that we keep talking about. <laughs> in the midst of it, suddenly yesterday, right, he decides to have a reshuffle. Yeah. And nobody knows why. Well, not as Angela Rayner. No. no. <laughs> well, people, some people think he decided to have it because she was making some kind of speech, but, I mean, I don't know whether that's true. I thought it was beautifully Plankish that yeah. she gave that speech saying... Um, that she she wanted the the Labour Party to be seen as mm. a government in waiting yeah. when the Labour Party can't Behind even her. communicate between the leader and the deputy <laughs> yeah. leader. Right. Well, and he must have done it on purpose because, of course, at the end of her speech, she got a lot of questions about the reshuffle. Yeah. She's thinking, I don't really know. And what then it's she about went, this. well, I wouldn't. They wouldn't be doing it without telling me. And one of the people <laughs> well, reshuffled. Guess what? <laughs> one of the people <laughs> reshuffled, Cat Smith, yeah. is actually on Rayner's team. So that's how little she knew. Yeah. I know, amazing. But that was the thing. Nothing happened for hours on end, you know, because I was here first when I was told, oh, there's a reshuffle uh, going on. I went, so, don't care. Yeah. Well, well, let me know when something happens. Nothing happened. Someone's been moved an to hour. Yeah, sh loads of I, I was going to say it was the curse of Rob Rinder because the guy who was on his show on Friday, um, something Simmons, I um, can't remember his name, but he was apparently the uh, opposite numbers of Pretty Patel. That he was the shadow home office, mm. um, or home secretary. And, and Rinder brought him in and said, the thing is, I've asked a lot of people about you, nobody knows who you are. And now he's out. <laughs> so <laughs> people still need to be given some other job. Lisa Nanny's been shoved off somewhere. And I, I read this morning what, what had happened. And it's a whole sort of intricate internecine map that you can mm -hmm. draw of who's gone. And nobody cares. Does anybody really care nobody who's become does. the shadow secretary of nobody state for cares. Wales? And it literally took hours. Yeah. And I kept, because I was then out for lunch, still nothing. Came back from lunch, still nothing. It was about four o'clock, five o'clock before something happened. Mm. And it went on and sort of all Trying night. Trying to keep you in suspense. It went on, yeah. And it was like, I don't care. Mm. Stop, you know, telling me things and, have and happened. Did he explain in the why he'd done it? Because not only is it pointless, I mean, no one cares, but, but what was his reason for doing it? I mean, literally, well, he's he got nothing moved, else to do, has he? He just moved the deck chairs doing, around on the Titanic. Now that he's not doing the second job, you know, he has to fill in a bit of time. <laughs> all, so. yeah, all he, true. again, Nick Thomas Simmons. Was another the guy, thing that makes that very plankish is that all he has to do in order to creep above the Conservatives yeah. and the opinion polling is nothing at all. Yes. Yeah, just keep his mouth. Well, just fact, don't do anything. The highest, here. the highest rating he got was when he was in isolation. So actually, <laughs> the best thing he should do is, to, is to just stay at home. Yeah. Just don't go out. Good leadership. Right? Leave Angela Rayner to do everything. And it actually works out quite well for them. Mm. It's astonishing. Final, final nominee from me is Priti Patel uh, and the mess. Talking about, you know, the shadow Home Secretary. What about the current Home Secretary and the mess that was creating was created before? Because we've forgotten already that terrible story of 27 people dying in the English Channel, which I'm really surprised hasn't happened more often. Yeah. You know, well, maybe it has, we just don't know. And maybe it has because we just don't know. But we're finding things out like, you know, people are getting threatened with guns, people are getting shot at, you know, in order to get on the boat to go across, to come across. So some of them are even being forced to come. Um, but every single week, I think, that I've been doing this radio show, she says, we're going to do something about it. Yeah. And then nothing ever happens. Yeah. Nothing. And, she's, and she's the same on crime. She's the same on every other part of a brief. Great at sitting in front of a camera rhetoric, promises, and so on, and then, of course, nothing happens. I was listening to your show yesterday, mm. actually, and both crying uh, with despair and laughing at yeah. your conversation with the Conservative MP. Oh, yeah, Adolf, David Simmons. Yeah, who started off with promise, but then he just turned into a kind of woke gender, yeah. didn't he, at the end of He it? just kept saying things like, well, of course, you know, um, they're very valuable to the economy because yeah. they come here... We've got to take our fair share. ...in the NHS, yeah. and then we've got to take our fair share. And I just said, I said, well, why? What exactly, what exactly what, are we taking our fair share of? Mm. What, why? You know, yeah, yeah. and he wasn't having any of it, yeah. you know, and he just kept talking about this bill that's going through, which is not going to even get through till about April or May, yeah. by which time another 40,000 people will have arrived. You know, it's just ridiculous. They just rehearse the same platitudes over and over yeah. and over again. And it's almost as if they don't want to stop it. Well, no, but and I don't think they do. I've got some numbers here. Right. You can indulge me just for a second. Right. So um, there was a peak in terms of failed asylum seekers. So these are asylum seekers that have gone through the process and failed. Yeah. So not just asylum seekers, the ones that have failed the process. Um, and back in 2013, the number that were returned peaked at 46,000. So in 2013, 46,000 failed asylum seekers were sent back mm. to their country of origin. Last year, under Priti Patel, it was 8,000. It's, it's, so it's dropped dramatically. And mm. at the same time, those claiming asylum 
has doubled since 2010. So the amount claiming has gone yeah. like that. The amount that are failing and are being deported has gone like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Priti Patel is failing, make no mistake. I mean, there is absolutely no way around the data. Mm. She, her home office and the whole government on immigration, you're right, it is almost as if they don't want to do anything yeah. about it. And then they have the brass to make, to put out comments such as saying, we're going to stop 100% of channel crossings. Yeah. As if anybody would, could possibly hope believe go that away. after you've had yeah. many, many yeah, thousands like coming over just, in a yeah. single day. It's like they, they seem to think it, like it's just going to stop. They're going to wake up one day and nobody's coming anymore. Hmm. And that's not what's going to happen, yeah. is it? But they're out of their, their depth, these politicians. Yeah. You know, not, not only are they out of depth and incompetent, but, of course, they, they don't know who to try and please one day mm -hmm. to the next. Um, they shouldn't be politicians. They can't be conviction politicians and actually have a stand, have an ideology and a vision and just stick to it, no matter the fact mm. that it might upset 40% of the population. Guess what? That's politics. But they don't seem to be able to do that. No. Boris Johnson's led us into this thing where he's trying to please all the people all the time, which is impossible. Mm. But again, who's advising them on the PR? Is it the same as the City of London Corporation? <laughs> yeah, well, because no one. who is telling them, set yourself up for a fall mm. so that you, you set the bar yeah. so high, as high as it is possible to set it, yeah. so that you, you can't even, you can't even get a, you know, slight, slight modicum yeah. of, of success. But it's because in the sort of darkest um, corners of the Home Office and, and in Border Force, they, they don't want to stop it. I mean, Border Force, I think, were only two weeks well, ago bringing a lawsuit because they wanted to get um, a ruling on why they were being told to send people back. Yeah. But they how, didn't want to send people back. How absolutely absurd that the, the Home Secretary could issue an instruction to turn boats back mm. and then the border force that is not elected mm. can, can say, say no, sorry, we're, we're not, not doing that. No, well, not this doing is that. all part of this kind of disquiet within these, um, these departments, mm. isn't it, where you've got... The, the members, the elected members, saying that we want to do something, but obviously not robustly enough. And yes, the civil servants with their own agendas yeah. doing their own thing. Well, most um, of them are working from home as well. Yes. I bet if you went Maybe down the home the office problem. now, there'd be hardly anybody there. Yeah, probably part of the problem. No accountability. Yeah. No, exactly yeah. right. Which needs to start firing people. Well, I mean, I think Boris needs to find a new home secretary, doesn't he? Well, but and he they, won't because she's friends though? with him. Well, yeah, and also, look, say what you like about Dominic Cummings, one of the greatest things I think that he decided to do, obviously was never able to do so, was a root and branch transformation of the civil service. Mm -hmm. The civil service are running this country with no all that happens, got that, no all accountability. That, all that happens is you've got that bloke out of the Home Office who then claimed about 600 grand from the... Uh, <laughs> yes, from being bullied. For being bullied. For being bullied. Yeah. We've become remember? a blob blobocracy. <laughs> blobocracy is very right, very true. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that's brought us to the end uh, of those nominations. We've got 10 to look at. We're going to try and pick now exactly who is going to win Plank of the Week. So, guys, you remember how this works. Um, Russell, why don't you tell Emma what your three are, and she will pick one of those to okay. go to the final. So, Ed Davey, Fremantle Council, <laughs> Western Australia. Sorry, I can't help but laugh when I say that. Fremantle Council, Western Australia, or, or, and or the National Tire and Auto Care Company. <laughs> There's no competition. They're all pretty Fre good, though. Fremantle, Fremantle Council or whatever it's called. For the the cat-banning council. The cat-banning council. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think you're going to go a long way. It's going to go a long way to beat that, aren't you? That is extraordinary. Uh, there's no competition. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how seriously people Great want list. us to be taking this story because if we make them plank of the week, you know, that might uh, skew Quite everything. Hurricane. Diplomatic crisis. Yeah, absolutely or, or what right. what they're going to ban next if we encourage them, yeah. I mean, they'll give somebody an idea, surely, in Somerset or something, you know. So, Emma, tell me your three. The RAF, yes. the City of London Corporation, or Disney Plus. Mm. Yes, I think it's the RAF. I think yeah. the RAF is the most heinous in the, of those three. The City of London thing is really stupid, but it's not as bad as... The air uh, service, ...completely doing away with an entire Aviators. gender. Yeah, yeah. Or well, actually two genders, right? So they've got no genders at all now. Yeah. And calling them after a Aviator. pair of sunglasses. Yeah, that is mad. Okay, yeah. so Russell, you want to pick mine? Uh, go on. Uh, so I've got Priti Patel, mm -hmm. Freddie Flintoff, and the BBC. Well, the BBC win it quite frequently, don't they? As they deserve to do. So well, when I'm... we're going to do towards the end of this month, um, plank of the year. Yeah. The BBC are up there. Yeah. So I'm minded not to choose them just for that no. reason. Um, I think, I think Priti Patel. Okay. Just because I think it's so serious. It's such a big story, though. She's at so odds with herself. The rhetoric, what she says and what she does are two so diverse and completely opposite things. Well, she doesn't seem to do anything. She's a continuing plank. Yeah. You know? I mean, you've got to say, the French have <laughs> the got some part plank. to play as well in this because the yeah. French have been particularly awful. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's saying something. Well, yeah. they, they disinvited her from a, mm -hmm. a meeting at the weekend mm. because they didn't like the fact that Boris had published one of his letters to them. <laughs> 
you know, I mean, really? I mean, people are dying. Yeah, this is the wake of 27 people Actually, dying. Yeah. No, we're not, you cannot come. Yeah. You're not going to Back come. Back on to stamping his <laughs> little feet. Party. No, no. <laughs> I mean, really, for God's sake. Right, so uh, we are then Fremantle Cats. I've got here as my shorthand. Chrissy Patel. And the RAF. Is there any show in the world that you could have those three things <laughs> as, as, the, as the most troublesome events <laughs> in of the, the world of the, of the week? Right. <laughs> I mean, it's quite extraordinary. Um, I, I'm. I mean, I listen. I'm not against the cats winning it. It's politically neutral, which is not something I'm usually very good at. I mean, it's so plankish, isn't mm. it? It is so ridiculous, and and so I mean, if. If it was April the 1st, you'd pick that as one that was made up, wouldn't you? I think it's my favourite Plank nomination of all time. Of all time. <laughs> I mean, tragically, unless we can vote them back in again next week, they won't make it, I think, think into the Planks of the Year. But it might get an honourable mention. Mm. Right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. OK, so what Richard Patel second? Yeah. You think? Yeah. Planks the RAF third? Yeah. You've That's always come right. to expect it of the RAF. I don't know what's going on with our armed forces. I mean, we're selling off After what happened with the everything. MOD and their pronouns, I think it's to be expected. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable, isn't it? What next? Yeah, risk incredible. assessments before you fix bayonets. I don't think they do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, I, think, I think you may be slightly behind the times on that. They'll be getting rid of their bomber jets, which is scary. I mean, we'll probably be down to that once we have made <laughs> so <laughs> little money We've got, got nothing left. You know, yeah, no aircraft carriers, no We take no this about the Imperial War Museum to find anybody with, you know. Right, well, thank you very much indeed. So, uh, we've got the RAF coming in third, we've got Pretty Patel coming in second, but the winners for the first time ever of Plank of the Week, the cats in Fremantle. But it's not actually the cats, it's the people that have told the cats not to go out. <laughs> Fremantle, Fremantle Council, Planks of the Week. Thank you very much to Emma Webb. Thank you, Russell. Uh, we'll see you next time.